And we are back with head coach Joe Pasternak of the UCSB men's basketball team. Three straight 20 win seasons over your first three years here, coach. Very successful in this era so far, and it looks like you're poised for another great season. Thank you so much for giving us your time today. Thanks for having us. So it looks like the depth is coming back this year, and I think that's going to be your strong suit for this UCSB men's basketball team. Can you tell me about all of those guys that come off the bench that can make a difference? Maybe not the stars just yet, but they're ready to make a name for themselves. You know, Max, uh, every single day in practice has been really competitive, and it's a highly, highly competitive uh, situation every single day in practice. Uh, you know, we haven't named starters. Uh, we, we, we really mix up the teams every day and go at each other and have had several scrimmages uh, thus far. We, we've only practiced 21 times um, in eight months. So we were on the tennis courts for probably six weeks, and all we were doing was shooting. So uh, we just got to a point where we're actually able to compete um, and defend and rebound and you know, when you think about it, when a team and individuals take off for eight months and they're not able to play the game of basketball, just shoot in their backyard or on a tennis court, uh, it takes a lot of time to get your rhythm back and um, how hard you have to play and compete on a daily basis. And, you know, we're still uh, after getting our guys to really compete really hard right now as um they just had uh, their 21st practice, and we're moving to 22 tomorrow. And, you know, that's our, our main thing is that each day that we're kind of getting better and better and we're able to compete uh, that much harder each day. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think that you talked about that eight-month hiatus and the resiliency of your guys. Talk about some of that resiliency, the adversity that they've had to handle without playing, having their season cut short last year, and then getting into the right mindset to do it all again this year and come back with a vengeance. Yeah, you know, it was really uh, tough. I think, you know, the one thing we talk about all the time is uh, you can't take anything for granted. Um, life, basketball, family, whatever. Um, you know, they were woken up in the morning early. We had a, a, a walk through the night before. We got to the breakfast room and we were told we weren't going to play the game. Uh, in the conference tournament at the Marriott. So uh, we all remember that morning very, very well. And uh, uh, the last game we played, uh, you actually did the announcing and you had a great, uh, great call on Ja'Cory's last shot. So that was kind of the last time we played a competitive game. And I think all our guys understand how important it is to not take anything for granted with what's going on. It's going to be a crazy year. Games are going to be canceled. They already have been canceled. And it's going to, um, you know, we're going to have to live day by day. And that's, that's, that's kind of our deal. We always talk about honoring the process. And that's all we can do right now. All we can control is that we get up in the morning, we have a great film session, lift weights, and practice tomorrow. And then other than that, nothing else is guaranteed, any one of our games. Coach, you know, you sound like the 76ers every time I hear you say honor the process, but that's truly what it is for you guys. That's the focus every single time. How do you honor a process this season without your star guard, Max Heidinger, who just graduated and he's now playing in Tel Aviv? Yeah, you know, um, Max, in three years here at UCSB, since we uh, took over, was the winningest player in the history of the school in a three-year span three years and he won 66 games. So he was a huge part of what we did, a huge part of the reason we won. And um, it's not, he's not an easy player to replace. Uh, he's a pro and he can get buckets at will. And so uh, for us, it's not going to be one guy, I don't think scoring 19 or 20 a game. I think uh, we have a lot of very good players and I think it'll be a much more balanced attack. He might have been the winningest player over the last three years in, in school history. You are the winningest coach over that three-year span in school history. So what do you plan to do with some of these new guys that are being integrated into the program? A guy like Miles Norris, who you wanted to get a hold of him last year, it didn't quite work out, and now he is a gaucho and ready to compete for your team. You know, I think Miles, I've known him since he was a freshman in high school, and he's come such a long way. Um, 
he struggled at Oregon and uh, we, we talked about, we thought it was in his best interest to go to San Francisco city junior college and get experience playing because he didn't play much at Oregon. And he really got a lot better. Justin LaVos, is the head coach there. He's a great coach. One of the best in, in Juco history in the state of California and really helped develop his game. And so uh, this is another, another uh, phase for him. And um, he's doing a great job honoring our process every single day, getting better and better. And, um, you know, he has a, lot, a long way to go to continue to be a great player. But uh, he's really bought in and is so coachable. He, he seems like that kind of guy that, that is bought into the process. And that's what you have with all of your recruits. To me, when I think about the players on your team, they are players that love what you're doing with the system. So let's talk about some of those players that have worked in this system. Deverell Ramsey and Ja'Cory McLaughlin, I think, have potential to be the best backcourt duo in the Big West Conference. Anything to say on that? Yeah, you know, Deverell Ramsey and Ja'Cory are experienced guards that have been there before, that have come up short past couple of years, you know, we finished second three years in a row and I think they have a chip on their shoulder. Uh, DeVerl has the ability to really pick up full court and pressure the basketball. And we got to use his speed and quickness uh, more this year, which we're going to. Um, he's uh, doing well in practice. Ja'Cory McLaughlin is a first team all league player. And, you know, he's a great quarterback uh, with the ball in his hands. He makes such the right read on different situations, whether it's a ball screen, a down screen, uh, dribble handoffs. He really makes the right read, whether it's to score or pass the ball and to who to pass to. Reads the defense very well. So um, he's really shooting the ball well, and I think he'll be one of the best guards uh, in our league for sure. And, you know, it's interesting, Coach. I, every single year I've watched Big West basketball, for me, the formula that has worked has been experienced young men who have been together for a group of years. They have the chemistry. You look at teams like Irvine that have gotten success with experience and chemistry. And this year, it seems like that's your team. And Amadou So, one of those guys who has chemistry in the paint with Robinson E. Dayhead, both veterans this year, and they're going to be leading that big man charge for you guys. Yeah, we, uh, you know, Amadou is, is a very, very talented player. He's improved every off season, gotten better, and um, he's a dominant big guy for us. Robinson is the heart of our team. He's such an unbelievable personality and leader and a guy that just brings it every single day unconditionally, how many minutes he's playing, foul trouble, not making baskets. He just always has an unbelievable attitude. And it really, uh, for our, our program, he's what we want our program to be. Um, those two, along with uh, Miles Norris, Destin Barnes in our front court transfer from Jacksonville, gives us added depth and experience. And Yakov Kukic uh, was a red shirt last year who also gives us added size. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's interesting because over those last couple of years, where you have been the winningest co head coach for UC Santa Barbara over that three-year span, it seems like there has been a rivalry that has formed with the UC Irvine Anteaters. Uh, yeah, we got the, the blue-green rivalry, but the Anteaters and the Gauchos are the two best teams in the Big West. It seems like perennially recently. And this year you open up against the Anteaters. What's it like preparing for your toughest matchup of the year as your first matchup of the year? Well, Russell is a great coach. I've known him for a long time. When, he, when I was at Cal as a young assistant, he was at Stanford. And, you know, he's a great coach, uh, someone I talk to, we talk. And so, um, you know, they're, they're just an amazing program. And we aspire to be where they are because they've, they finish first every year. Um, uh, or, or second right in there. And, um, you know, we split with them last year, home and home. Uh, they're a physical team. They're a very, very well-disciplined, executing, rebounding team, one of the best rebounding and defensive teams in, a, in the country. And he's done an amazing job with their program. And, um, you know, we're, we're just, for us, you can't focus on one program. You know, it's only two games out of the whole year. They're 20 conference games. That's two of the games. Uh, for us, all we're focusing on each day is getting better and better. And whenever we play them, we play them. And, you know, we'll do the best we can when we play them. 
And, um, but they're just two of the games of our entire schedule. It's not going to make or break our season. Everybody puts so much emphasis on that one game. And I don't mm -hmm. think you can do that because it's such a long season, but um, you know, we have the utmost respect for their program. Absolutely. And what I think was so interesting about previous seasons is you have a non-conference schedule to ease you into that conference schedule, or at least get you going, get you into mid-season form. Without that this year, is it going to be a little bit more intense heading into the start of the season? You know, um, it'll be public more uh, next week, but, you know, we, we have a schedule in place, but a lot of the games aren't going to happen. And that's just because of uh, teams coming from out of state, COVID protocols. And so because of that, it's going to be, you know, very dicey. We're not going to have that many pre-conference games. And we're going to have to do the best we can. We're fortunate we have a deep team that our practices have been really competitive. And, you know, for us getting better, we're going to get better in practice. That's the bottom line. And every practice matters. And we have to keep grinding it out in practice. Now, I do want to ask you regarding that, just, just you playing Irvine at the start of the year and then that possibly being a matchup toward the end of the year. Do you think it's going to hurt or help you guys that they're only going to see you at the start and they won't see how your team evolves over the course of the season heading into the big west tournament you know the season is a marathon it's not a sprint there's no single game that's going to win our conference or lose our conference and you know at the end of the day we're just concentrating on tomorrow's practice max that's kind of how i work i just listened to a video of pat pat riley and he has uh, had a theme all his life of the main thing. What's the main thing is the main thing. And he has his new thing is the next thing, the next thing, the next thing for me is tomorrow's film session in the morning, our guys going to weights and us practicing. And that's kind of my total focus. Cause when I start getting looking ahead is when I start getting distracted, I can't do that. And our, our guys can't do that. I have to keep our guys on a day-by-day -day basis, especially in this time. Games are going to get canceled. We're going to be shut down, maybe, hopefully not. It's just that there's no way we can even think about what's happening in the future. It's all about the process. It's about tomorrow. All right. So who has impressed you most trusting the process every single day, staying present and staying focused? Who has really stood out to you? You know, I think Robinson Edehan has done an amazing job because he epitomizes when I talk about the process. It's every single day being all in, no matter the circumstances, with an unbelievable attitude and an incredible work ethic. And he does it every single day, every, every drill. That would be the guy that I would say. When you get players that come out of a CC, they enter into your program and they instantly bring a spark like that in the clubhouse and in the locker room and on the court. Uh, does that make you just a little bit more grateful to be coaching this team and to be coaching these players specifically and to be in Santa Barbara as a gaucho? Yeah, no question. Nobody's more grateful than me. I can tell you that. To <laughs> here to have this weather, to breathe this air. And, um, you know, the character of our team is incredible. These are such amazing young men. I mean, I've coached a lot of teams for been involved in college basketball now for 23 years. And I, I haven't been around a group of young men as grateful, as high character as the guys we have. And then over the past three or four years here, they've been unbelievably high character kids that want to get a degree from this amazing university, do the right thing off the court and, bring it on the court. And um, I'm just extremely grateful to be here. There are so many leaders on this team. We talk about Devereaux, we talk about Jacory, but uh, I wanted to talk about just the changes in eligibility and what may have allowed a couple more of those leaders to stay or, or to bring in some new guys. Um, you know, seniors, there was a, some confusion on what that eligibility was for, for some fans that I was speaking to. So if you could just clarify what changed in NCAA rulings this year, which allowed some different players to be able to be playing? Yeah, you know, the NCAA, uh, to their credit, recognized that this season is going to be really crazy. There's going to be shutdowns and 
missed games and canceled games, and they didn't want to take it from these seniors. So they've allowed the seniors eligibility to come back for another year if academically they can do it. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, that to their credit, that was really a uh, great foresight on their, their minds. And, um, you know, some guys are going to want to go pro and uh, make money playing this game and some want to come back and get a grad degree. And so we're still working on that and working through that. But, you know, that's again, the future, that's something we'll do. We'll sit down with them when our season ends and decide, but right now, you know, we're just focused on this year. Yeah, you're locked in for this year, and uh, I, I feel like I feel like the energy is a little different this year. You know, Coach, I've been watching your team for three, four years now, and I've been saying to anybody that asks that this is the team that was that was really built for success. And um, I know you said that you're so proud of these guys, but what do you think sets them apart? from a couple of these teams that you've had in the past, whether it be at UC Santa Barbara or whether it was at another school, you think that this team can really be the epitome of success in your program? You know, Max, it's just way too early to tell. We're only 21 practices in. We've only been with our guys in, in like, the court. Like, we're not allowed to have, like, team meetings outside. We're not allowed to meet with them. So – it's really, really lessened the time we're with them to really get to know them. We do it on Zoom only, which is a little awkward. Um, But I think what we have is experience, depth, and talent. And I think it might take a little bit to be at our best. I don't think we'll be at our best in November or December. I think we'll more be at our best February, March, Um, just because we missed eight weeks of practice in the summer. Every summer, we get eight weeks to practice with our team. Um, and we didn't have that. We didn't have the three months of the spring time to practice with our team. So that's like five months that we're usually practicing, which we haven't done. And then we had six weeks on the tennis court. So we've really just been with them 21 days. So I think it's way too early to, to compare this team to any other team. Um, you know, our first team, Gabe Vincent, we had him on a Zoom with our team yesterday. Mm-hmm. You know, he was part of a team that won 23 games and tied the most wins in the history of the school mm-hmm. and uh, biggest turnaround in NCAA history. I mean, that was a really good team. Um, we didn't have any depth. You know, we were like six or seven uh, deep. But, you know, this team has a lot of potential. I mean, a lot of potential. Uh, unfortunately, the talent and the potential – doesn't always translate into wins and all we can hope is that our team is just going to get better and better and better and we can be at our best in March Uh, Pete Newell a mentor of mine used to always tell me this and I say it every year it's you know he had a golf analogy to, to describe basketball season and he said you know and I don't play golf so I I don't really understand it but most people do play golf and they're telling me you haven't been watching the masters. No, you strike me as that kind of guy. I didn't even know the masters was golf max. (laughs) That that sounds like a tennis tournament to me. Um, But you know, Pete Newell's golf analogy is in the game of basketball in November and December, you drive for show. And then February, March, you putt for dough. And for me, that couldn't be more the truth of this season because we're so far behind where we've been at this time. If you can think about it last year and every year before the basketball season started November 10th, that was the first game. So we would have already played a couple games. So it's a real strange time. And, you know, I think, you know, we'll get to where we need to get, but it's going to take some time and um, hopefully some of these early games will will test us and get us to that point well we're looking forward to seeing you guys putt for dough in uh march and april and coach i really appreciate the time that you gave me tonight and go gauchos i'm looking forward to this season been looking forward to it for years and years let me tell you thanks max thanks for having us and uh go gauchos to all our fans out there